after waiting 10 days for a perfect weather window to cross through one of the world's fiercest tidal gates, the morning finally arrived. We had the perfect light wind day. We just needed to settle down, get our timing right, and wait for breakfast to be delivered. So a quick note about the Radisane. It is one of the world's fiercest tidal gates. Boats have to pass between an outer rock and an inner rock to get through to North Brittany. The overfalls kicked up by these two bodies of water meeting are fierce. Your timing has to be right and the weather has to be right. And getting this wrong can make the difference between one of the best sails you're ever gonna have and one of the worst sails you're ever gonna have. So with breakfast out of the way and the anchor raised, we head off out of the anchorage to do the seven miles to our tidal gate. Just a small <laughs> issue of something wrapped around the prop to deal with first. I can tell by the look on your face what you're thinking about. I don't know. Does that sound strange to you? In all our years of cruising, having a rope cutter has dug us out of problems so many times. It is an invaluable asset and once again, our rope cutter has come to the rescue and shredded whatever it was that had entangled itself around our prop. Literally not a breath of wind. It, the wind is going to pick up probably before we, we go through the Radisane. Less than 10 knots. But it's not going to be like this all day. <sighs> Another day on the water. Another day on the water. That um, sun's actually really lovely and warm. I hope it stays out today. I love it when the sea looks all glossy like this. It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's nice. Like glassy, an oily sea. Yeah. Look behind you, mate. Look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful that is.
tonight I don't wanna wake up I don't need to feel let down by love Folks are lining up They're crowding all over To see us fall down Are you falling down? There's no net, no wire, no catch If you climb high, my dear Stake to the ground, lay your bets down. I we are one of about six boats that have left the anchorage, and we've definitely left early, although not as early as others. And now I know why they decided to leave so early is because they're just planning to sail with literally not a breath of wind, they're, they're just kind of bobbing around, which is totally okay. And uh. What a morning, what a beautiful morning. I love days like this where it's kind of like grey and moody, you can barely tell like where the horizon is, everything is just like one colour, colour but all different textures. It's really beautiful and it, it never ceases to amaze me how the ocean can change so much. It's, it's still the Atlantic Ocean, it's still the same thing but like it it changes so much, it changes the way it looks, the way that it looks changes, the way that it is, the sea state, and you know, you never, you never know what you're going to get. Um, that's one thing I love about living on a boat, the constant changing state of the sea. It's beautiful, really beautiful today. And by this afternoon it will be something different. And that's what I love. The audio was really lovely. I wish that we could have gone ashore. I wish that we could have stayed longer. I think next time that we are in this area, whenever that is, um, we are definitely going to spend a little bit more time there, spend a few days at anchor, have our baguettes delivered to us every morning and um, enjoy the surrounding area because it's a lovely anchorage, really nice. But for now, we are heading to another really lovely place just as something different <laughs> and um, yeah heading north going north to North Brittany I think this is uh, the end of South Brittany and um, yeah as of this afternoon we'll be in North Brittany and that's uh, a strange thing once we're in, we're in North Brittany then we are you know, just across the English Channel to the UK. So we're so close to home. It's really disconcerting. We've been away for five years, six years, and now we are just a couple of hundred miles away, if that. Really weird. I've been running down the empty streets, blindfolded from misbeliefs. I've been back where we met all the moments and regrets I've been searching empty alleys called your name out in the prairies the sunlight shades but what remains is the shade of you I gotta ooh, hold on the memories are here but you are gone Wouldn't be too efficient, but we're gonna end up getting there, aren't we? Oh yeah, we're trying to slow us down. Not yeah, to exactly. Speed us up. down. <laughs> get the briefing. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to let the gear out a little bit? Uh, you have to stall the sails a little bit, Terry. So we've got all oh, these yeah. guys. We're now doing. Damn. Four. <laughs> we're doing four knots. We're now doing five. <laughs> The thing, all the time I say to you, if you trim the sails, no, I forgot I was busy. And then the one day that you were not meant to be doing anything, you're like... I was kind of going to do vlogging. Well, pull it in a little bit. I'll just dump the main boat. <laughs> we're doing five knots. If there's only, there's less than, there's only nine knots of apparent wind. She does sail quite well up in this way. Memories are it's 
So we're still making yeah 5.1 knots. Just doing that, Nick, gave us an extra point to the knot. Um, in only eight knots of wind, and <laughs> for once we're actually trying to slow ourselves down because we're going to be arriving about an hour too early. But yeah, we've we've kind of jumped the main a little bit. The main's not trimmed particularly well at the moment. The jib isn't trimmed perfectly, although it's not flogging. And we reckon we're about an hour too early, and um, we are. How many boats are ahead of us, Nick? I don't think there's many boats ahead of us. Four or five. Really? Three, four or five. Okay. I think that's shooting. Is that the Julian over there with a sort of blue boat? One of them will be. There's several boats behind us as well. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven boats behind us. So we're definitely one of the first ones through. But. See how we go. I mean, the sea state's very calm. If it gets to the point where we're like, oh, actually, let's let's wait. We can just turn around and drill around out here for a while. All right. Yeah. You can make my prawns and potatoes for dinner. <laughs> what does that say? So I know that you think that all the boats are in front of us, but I can see like seven, eight boats behind us, about two or three miles behind us. I, I get it. I'm not suggesting our position is not completely related to what time we thought we should leave. I'm just saying to you that I've known this boat, we've known this boat for a very long while and for us to be doing four and a half, five knots under a dumped main is impossible unless we're picking up some tide. We've tried punching tide here, babe. Remember, remember we got down to like zero the other week? Babe, and then that, that was a completely different situation. You know, full world, the tide, the tide, the tide um, here isn't that strong. <laughs> right the same. And with the question as to whether we were picking up tide or not still unanswered, we settled down to getting the boat slowed down enough so that we hit our tidal gate at exactly the right time. Down the empty streets, blindfolded by misbeliefs, I've been back to where we met, all the moments and regrets, I've been searching empty alleys right. all the name. Nice sandwich? Yes. It's cold. Mm. Yeah, if I'd had time, I would have made you a cup of tea as well. That's right, let's get through the right the same. Get into North Brittany and then we can get to Catalan. Hey! Sounds good. So, what's the situation? Well, literally, we're just. You know, we're punching a little bit of tide, but we're just at low rev, so just to avoid the overfalls, I'm happy just to literally pootle into it. Um, we've got 0.8 of a mile till the actual constriction, and we've got, from remembering this for the last couple of times, about two, 300 yards of overfalls. Um, I think the last time we did this, we, we our timing was out by about half an hour, and it was pretty rough. The okay. first time. Yeah, the first time we did it, we got our timing spot on, and it was it was a, it was a doddle. So the only other thing we have to work out is that because everyone has to get this tidal gate at the same time, it's pretty busy. It so is. There's lots of boats around. There are like six boats under sail that way of different sizes. There's one over there. He's out of position. I don't know why he's out of position, but uh, and then there's a couple that are coming through on the very, very last of the ebb the other way. There's a couple of south, southbound boats. So it's just, you know, it's not the sort of thing, well, it is. I suppose it is the sort of thing you can do under autopilot with a cup of tea, but um, I think the rather sane of all the places we've ever sailed, uh, anywhere, including all of Brittany, it's the one thing where your passage planning has got to be like bang on got a fearsome reputation it does but you know fearsome reputation in the same way that you know 
uh, monkeys can have a fearsome reputation if you if you smile at them or you bait them. But normally, if you pet a monkey and you're nice to it, it, it just makes noises. You're like you. You've got a fearsome reputation, but all they need to do is bring you cups of tea and biscuits, and then you're okay. We haven't got any biscuits left. I know. Well, That's the bloody tragedy. All these lovely Breton cookies we've got lying around, and well, we were, there were loads of like bis, bis, how do you say it in French biscuit biscuitries. What? The biscuit places, biscuit shops. What's a biscuit shop in French? Biscuiterie. A biscuitery? Yeah. <laughs> Are you made up a word? No. Okay, a biscuitery. Biscuitery. Sounds like a sounds like an intestinal complaint. I've got biscuiteries. <laughs> <laughs> Point being, and loads of biscuit shops in Concarneau. We didn't buy any, anything. All right. Well, when we tie up, yeah, our reward for leaving Biscay after over a year. South Biscay. No, the Bay of Biscay. Oh, Bay of Biscay. Oh, we're leaving Biscay. Oh, we've, we've been here for a year, mate. Oh, I just realised that we're leaving Biscay. I'm sad. Yeah, carry on. What's our reward? Biscuits. Yay! <laughs> Swings and roundabouts. Biscuits or Biscay? Biscuits, yeah. The Biscays. Anyway, look, I've got to do some now. I can't be, can't no, be talking to you all day. Well, look, we're on a clip. That dude's just come through. And so with our timing absolutely where we wanted it to be, we ghosted through the Radisane between the rock with the lighthouse and the mainland. And with all the other fleet heading north, we had a pretty pleasant sail. Not only that, the sun was about to come out. I know that you are having a hard time right now. I can't believe we learned about Biscay. We're now, where are we? We're not in the channel. We're not in the English Channel yet. No, we're going around the westernmost point of France. Yeah. So between here, Camaray is like Camaray and Brest, the most western points in France. Yeah. And then we head around into the north coast of France, toward Normandy. North Brittany. We go to Brittany, then Normandy, yeah. and then England. You because we only want And with our passage through the Radisson complete. The Bay of Biscay behind us, we now just need to navigate our way to Camaray. Just a question of avoiding a lot of granite obstructions and rocks beneath the waves. It says there are several passages through the rocks, so you can go through. Can you just um, check the weather or in like an hour's time, just to make sure it's not going to get like super windy today? I just want to know what the weather's going to be in the next few hours. I know that you feel all alone in this world, but you have to put your trust into us, and we will help you through. Cause we only want what's best, what is best for you. How's it going? Good, so we're just about to um, go through this funny little patch with lots of rocks, a lot of which are underwater. Um, but I think it'll be quite straightforward, we just have to follow the line on the chart essentially and uh, yeah, go through the little and narrow gaps. Depth gauge. Yeah. So we've got 25 um, meters at the moment, so it's not an issue until we go through that between that um, island, between the island and Next door, so all right, so good. I'm back to where we met all the moments and regrets. I've been searching empty Alice calls your name out in the 
prairies The sunlight shades but what remains It's the shade of you I've got it and as we approached the very beautiful and oh so familiar town of Camaray, we hailed the marina to ask for a place. Their response, as in most of France, find a place wherever we can. So, lions and fenders at the ready, we took our 40 foot boat into a marina that probably wasn't designed for 40 foot boats. They're rafted over there. Maybe you've got a raft. Oh, I've got to turn the boat around, darling, so I don't get a choice anymore. And with Ruby Rose successfully and safely tied up in Camaray, the rider same behind us, it was time for us to go and celebrate a good sail and a good passage plan. Yeah, Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> 